morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health, and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. If you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself or a loved one off their meds and on a good nutritional supplement program, again, we can help you at 844-236-6010. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you're interested in checking out the Longevity products, purchasing Longevity products, or joining the Brightside Ben team, if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you want to start yourself a business and make some money helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, if you're the kind of person that wants to change lives and impact other people at the most fundamental level, that is the level of health, and if you're business minded, I would encourage you to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can have your own business and enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, make your own hours, make as much, as little or as much money as you want, and some folks are making quite a bit of money helping folks at the most fundamental level, and that is the level of health using nutritional supplements. We make it really easy. Call 866-735-2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. They can give you the scoop, and you can also order products at 866-735-2470, or you can head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and order products off the website as well. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. That's truthtreatments.com. Make sure you look at our Retinol 5% Gel as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream at truthtreatments.com. Okay, we've been talking about connective tissue, the nature of connective tissue. I, I think this is such an important subject. It's something you could just talk about forever, really, because... The connective tissue exemplifies the idea that all disease is cell disease, and understanding the nature of the connective tissue really reveals the, the fallacy of the highly deified and respected medical model that has done nothing, nothing to thwart our chronic degenerative disease crisis. In fact, it has presided over an epidemic that is uh, of epic and biblical proportions. Chronic degenerative diseases account for trillions of dollars in healthcare costs, and Un, uncountable amounts of misery or un, un, uh, impossible to assess amounts of misery. And I'm talking diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. And I have a personal, by the way, um, personal uh, connection to dementia. My dad has dementia and it is absolutely horrible. And I walk, go see him in the, in the nursing home and I see the kind of food they feed him. And I'm not allowed to give him supplements. And I know some Beyond Tangy Tangerine can make all the difference in the world. But because we have this idea that diseases are localized to specific structures of the brain, it never dawns on, or specific structures of the body, it never dawns on us that there's an underlying pathology that unifies all disease. There's underlying breakdowns that unifies, unify all diseases. The nature of the connective tissue exemplifies this idea. All diseases have a connective tissue basis. All of them, chronic degenerative disease by definition, has a connective tissue basis. And your diagnosis doesn't matter. 
This is a hallmark idea, what I call the bright side philosophy, from a healing perspective, which the body is fully equipped to do. The body is a healing system, regenerating system. From a regenerating and healing system uh, perspective, your diagnosis doesn't matter. Diagnosis is a delusion. It's a fallacy, and this is why no one reverses their chronic degenerative diseases by going to a diagnosis specialist, i.e. a doctor. That's what a doctor is, a diagnosis specialist. He's trained in diagnosis. And this is why there's this big taboo, ooh, I'm not allowed to diagnose, I can't diagnose, I'm not a doctor, I can't diagnose. Well, you don't need a diagnosis, not from a healing and reversal perspective. Doctors are obsessed with it, and for good reason, really, because when this idea of diagnosis came out in the, in the 16th and 15th centuries, it represented an advance over the superstitious ideas of doctors of the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, who used to blame evil humors or little elves that shot arrows at you. So the idea that there was a diagnostic basis, diagnosis by the way means through knowledge, diagnosis, the idea that there was this knowledge basis that could help us understand the disease process, it represented a revolutionary advance for human beings of the 13th and 14th century. Today it's backwards. Today it's primitive. Today it does not serve us, except it serves an entrenched medical model that serves itself. An entrenched medical model that could care less about the individual, except as far as the individual supports it. That's right, I'm sorry. The medical model is not here for us people. It's there for itself, as all models and institutions are. The government's not there for us either, by the way. And your lawyers and the legal system, that's not there for us either. Nothing is there for the individual if it's in based, based in the institution. I always say the institution versus the individual, and the medical model represents the institution. It represents the establishment, and it's not there to make individuals better. That's not its role. Its role is to extract as much lucre and resources as it, as it can from us. That's its role, to perpetuate itself. And if we happen to get better, which happens rarely, that's gravy. So your diagnosis doesn't matter if you want to get better. And this makes sense if we understand the nature of the connective tissue, the nature of the fundamental building blocks or the fundamental components of how we all break down. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. Knowledge is power. Diagnosis through knowledge, yes. Knowing something about the body is power, but the problem is the diagnosis knowledge, the knowledge that we get when we're diagnosed, is not about the chemistry of the body. It's not about what's happening in the body. The diagnosis is just a classification. The diagnosis is just so we can get coded into the computer and so that our physician doesn't have to think about what's happening in the body. He can go to his little magic book and see what kind of protocols he give for this kind of diagnosis. When we get diagnosed, it's not the underlying cause or, or the pathology, the breakdown itself that's being addressed. It's not the starvation and suffocation and toxification that's being addressed. That's all disease, folks, starvation, suffocation, and toxification, all of it. Disease is based on a lack of nutrition, disease is based on a lack of oxygen, and disease is based in toxicity. And it, this is not a medical issue. When we get diagnosed, nobody's talking about the starvation, suffocation, and toxification. They're talking about the symptoms. They're talking about the pain for the most part, because that's what most symptoms are. Or sometimes they have the nerve to treat things that don't even have symptoms, just in case. For the most part, if we're gonna treat a symptom, we treat pain, or maybe we treat swelling, or maybe we treat inflammation, or maybe we treat a jacked up immune system, or we resort to poisoning things. This is another wonderful strategy, the medical model. Somehow or another, this is supposed to be helpful. Poisoning the heart if you have high blood pressure, or arrhythmia, electrocuting the heart, burning it, cauterizing it, killing it, if, you have, if the heart is freaked out, or taking out things, taking out the thyroid. If your thyroid is freaked out so badly, it's got Graves' disease, and because it's so freaked out because of all the toxicity and lack of nutrition and, and, and lack of oxygen, your thyroid goes crazy, your metabolism goes crazy. Oh, I got the solution. Let's take the thyroid out. This is the medical model. We poison things, we remove things, we radiate things, and if you believe the medical model, well, you drank the Kool-Aid, folks. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. 
Ben here. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, something you may have read about, heard about, been told about your body or about health or about drugs or about nutrition, we're here for you to help clarify, clarify the confusion. Nutrition can be very confused, confusing. Health can be confusing. It shouldn't be. How the body works is really a simple matter. You feed it the good stuff. You don't put the bad stuff in, and the body does the rest. Nonetheless, we got an epidemic of bodily breakdown that is not just, not just a, a concept or an idea, but it's agony and misery, not just for the people who have it, but for the people who live with the people that have it. And it is tragic beyond belief because the body's designed to heal. The body is designed to recover and regenerate and renew. And this is why I rail against the medical model. By the way, I hope nobody here is, is nobody listening is hearing me rip on individual doctors. Individual doctors, for the most part, are well-meaning, good people. They're kind people. They want to help. It's the model. It's the institution, which they are victims of themselves. You know, if a, a physician goes outside the box with a protocol to treat a health challenge, he can go to jail. He can lose his license. He can lose his, his malpractice insurance. So it's not about individual doctors. It's about the model, the institution, the institution versus the individual. And the institution perpetuates itself with this idea of diagnosing. There's thousands of ways or thousands of classifications, uh, uh, disease classifications, and each one requires its own specialist. It requires its own protocol. It requires its own drug regimen, none of which, by the way, can ever be cured. That's... That's the definition of a chronic, long-term, progressive, degenerative disease. It can't be cured. So what do we need these people for? I call this phenomenon the diagnosis delusion or diagnosticism. It's a type of religion. It's a religion of diagnostics. We deify our diagnosis. We make it like God. We give it power. We identify with it. We are a diabetic. I am a diabetic. I have depression. I have amyotropic lateral sclerosis. And not only is this not true, because the body is a verb and disease is diseasing, which is our reassurance that we can reverse this thing because it's a process. You can just halt the process and turn it around. The body can turn on a dime if we turn on a dime. So not only is it not true that by simply naming and applying labels, we will get better, but it's unnecessary to really get better. No one has amyotropic lateral sclerosis, but rather they've got sclerosis or fibrosis or repair a repair mechanism that is proceeding as at an accelerated pace. That's what sclerosis is. That's what fibrosis is, which is behind it all. When I talk about connective tissue problems, I'm talking fibrosis and I'm talking sclerosis. All chronic degenerative disease is fibrosis and sclerosis and hardening, secondary to repair, secondary to toxicity. All disease is cell disease. All cell disease is connective tissue disease, and it's manifested by sclerosis and fibrosis and blockages and inflammation and fluid accumulation, and it's true about all of them. No one has arthritis. Our cartilage is breaking down, and the body's repairing, is trying to repair it with fibers because we don't have enough nutrients for building cartilage, or we got too much crap coming in the body, and it's breaking down the cartilage. No one has Alzheimer's or dementia. It's amyloidosis. Alzheimer's is amyloidosis. Amyloidosis is a fundamental bodily breakdown that occurs everywhere in the body, not just in the brain. And the idiotic medical model that wants to vaccinate us, this is what they want to do for, for Alzheimer's. Have you ever wondered why there's nothing, Zippo, Nada, anybody can do for dementia? It's because you can't shut down the fibrotic process. The body wants to repair. Alzheimer's is the quintessential example of amyloidosis or fibrosis. It's occurring in the brain, and that's it. So you got 12,000 plus different disease classifications, but when you strip them down, you unpack them, you take off the Latin decrees. You think your doctor speaks Latin, by the way, or Greek? You take off the Latin decree, you take off the Latin proclamation or diagnosis, what you end up is fibers and hardening and inflammation and accumulation of fluids, all as a protective repair mechanism following toxicity and deficiency, period. Capital P, period. This is purely logical. And once we understand 
the nature and the relevance of the, the extracellular matrix and the connective tissue, which is the structure that's underlying everything. It's the structure that electrifies the cells, feeds the cells, oxygenates the cells, detoxifies the cells, and every organ and every gland and every tissue in the body. We will no longer be bamboozled by our beta blockers and lowering cholesterol, the ultimate stupid idiotic medical protocol for dealing with heart disease is shutting down the cholesterol, uh, a cholesterol uh, uh, manufacturing system in the body because there's too much cholesterol. We won't be fooled by it once we understand this fundamental nature of the connective tissue and the extracellular matrix that feeds and nourishes and electrifies everything in the body. So this delusion of diagnosis, this lie that says we can become better by naming our disease, by, by coming up with some kind of diagno uh, uh, classification, is about drugs, it's about surgery, it's about radiation. This is the only thing a doctor has in his magic bag of tricks. Drugs, radiation, surgery, and perhaps you can throw in electrocution in there too. They can only kill things. That's all the medical model can do. Kill, remove, poison. Not good stuff. I mean, if you came from another planet and you came to Earth and you said, okay, we treat diseases by killing things. We treat diseases by removing things. We treat diseases by electrocuting things. We treat diseases by radiating things. They say, what is going on here? What kind of backwards, primitive, barbaric culture is this? They treat diseases by poisoning? They treat diseases by extracting and removing? This is how we treat illness? This, it's a, emblematic, symptomatic of the entire stupidity of the modern medical model that doesn't do anything to help us, just hinders our attempts to, uh, the body's attempts to repair and to fix and what really is the issue. And because we really don't know what hydrogenitis superativa is or amyotropic lateral sclerosis or mitochondrial myopathic chronic progressive degenerative ophthalmopalesia, which is basically your eye is messed up, or macrocytic, megoblastic, aplastic anemia, or whatever Latin gibberish they tell you you got, we just follow along with the program because, of course, your doctor knows everything. After all, they know how to say big words and say them in Latin. And we know nothing. We're just average people. So we believe them. And we say, I have amyotropic lateral sclerosis. I have multiple sclerosis. And we wear T-shirts and baseball hats that lock in our identification. And we spend billions and trillions of dollars looking for cures the cure. Every day I get three or four emails about the cure for multiple sclerosis, the cure for cancer. There's no cures. There's no magic here, folks. This is science. This is logic. This is common sense. You got something going on in the body because the wrong stuff's getting in and the, and the good stuff isn't. That's it. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Does that sound too simple? This is based on the idea of simplexity. And this is a physics concept that says underneath the most complex phenomena, you will find basic building blocks. You can come up with 100,000 words from 26 little letters. You can come up with Google and, and every intricate, complicated application or software you can name up from zero and from one. That's simplexity. And likewise with disease. Underneath 12,800 disease classifications, you'll find fibrosis and sclerosis and starvation and suffocation and toxification. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, we'll get to you here in just a sec. And if you'd like to reach us, we've got lines open at 844-236-6010. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. And 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the websites as well. And if you go to brightsidehealth.com, you can find some really cool health products that I personally selected as being effective and unique, including our bone broth protein and pure hemp technology CBD tincture. Got a few more products I'm adding on there, some coconut protein and some vegan protein. Should be up there, if not today, sometime this week. That's brightsidehealth.com. And of course, you can head it over to truthtreatments.com if you want to look at our connective tissue building 
retinol 5% gel, True Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and True Serum. And that's what it's really all about, folks. When it comes to aging or anti-aging, when it comes to beauty, when it comes to health, it's all about building, regenerating, supporting the production of healthy connective tissue. Anything that supports the production of healthy connective tissue is going to be in your health and longevity interest and your beauty interest as well. And if you've got a skincare product, by the way, that's not addressing the connective tissue in a real fashion, not just pretend, not just we, you know, in, uh, in the laboratory or in vitro, but in real life, and there's only a couple of ingredients, retinol and vitamin C that will do that. If you're not using these two ingredients, retinol and fat-soluble vitamin C, you are missing the connective tissue building boat. And that is the absolute most important and fundamental phenomenon when it comes to anti-aging anti-aging and longevity as well as beauty when it comes to skin health. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Lucky us, from the journal Nature Communications, a new immunologic and endocrine syndrome. We got a new disease. You can add that to our 12,000 plus disease classifications. Now we have a new disease. This one is called armadillo syndrome because it was first found in armadillos. Actually, it's a progressive benign tumor of the outer layer of the uh, adrenal glands. Technically, it's bilateral macronodular adrenal hyperplasia. That's the official name. Or you'll see a commercial now because they love, they love acronyms. So you're going to see commercials for, do you have BMAH? Well, we've got a drug for you. BMAH is just the same crapola different day. One of the ways the body breaks down is it cells divide really rapidly. When cells divide really rapidly, you are always looking at an issue that involves insulin and involves, uh, always uh, typically involves insulin and the hormone estrogen. Estrogen metabolism is regulated by the digestive tract. Insulin, of course, is regulated by both digestion and blood sugar. And bingo, you got your two points on the triangle of disease. And given that we've got all kinds of stress issues in this country, doesn't it make sense that we would have a new issue with the adrenal glands, another health challenge that affects the adrenal glands. Can anybody out there say triangle of disease? Somebody should tell these folks in Nature Communications, this is just another example of the primal nature of the triangle of disease, which in turn is related to cell disease, which in turn is related to toxicity and nutritional deficiency and suffocation, all disrupting the connective tissue. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Spencer in Toronto. Good morning, Spencer. Hello, Ben. What's, how you doing, Spencer? Good morning. Not, not bad. How you doing? I'm doing good. How can we help you? Oh, I have a question about my uh, brother's fiance. Um, she has headaches every day, um, 24-7. That's terrible. And Migraines? Yeah, and, and they often will become migraines, um, but I'm not sure. I don't think they're migraines all the time, but she does deal with headaches pretty much every day all the time. And she also suffers from anxiety and panic attacks and sometimes depression. Okay. Those are all secondary to the headaches, more than likely, and the headaches themselves are secondary to some, to some kind of toxicity. A headache is caused by some kind of weird change in the blood vessels in the head. Headaches are vascular. And then that vascularity, that opening and closing of blood vessels, or t typically what happens is the blood vessels open, uh, and then that causes a, a rebound closing. First they open real wide, and then the body says, oh my God, we're opening too wide, let's close. And that's where you get that throbbing effect. But basically you're looking at problem, issues with blood vessels opening and closing. These always, always, always follow some kind of attack. That attack can be from outside the body in the form of a food allergy, or it can be from inside the body in the form of broken down estrogen metabolism. Either, and because estrogen is, uh, is a, uh, estrogen metabolism is regulated by the liver and bile and the intestine, again, you have a digestive health issue. So this whole idea of going back to the digestive system is not because I'm Mr. Food Guy. I'm not Gary Null. I'm not David Wolf. I eat crap. Okay, I'm not here to proselytize about vegetables, but I'm just saying if you have some kind of symptoms of attack in the body, which is what headaches are, you've got to go back to food. All right, now, more than likely, this is a woman that's got a history of food problems. Are, are you with me on this? Um, Spencer? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm not uh, like, you don't know. exactly sure, okay. but I see what She'll you're know. saying, yes. 
She'll know she has a history of food problems. Now, if you can, uh, if you can uh, find problems with her menstrual cycle, like her issue, her headaches get worse when she has her period or she has problem periods or she misses periods, that will implicate estrogen. And then the, you want to start working with the estrogen system. I would be using progesterone cream or progesterone capsules. You get those from a doctor or pregnenolone. Anytime you have an estrogen issue, think pregnenolone. It's not curative, but it helps balance things out. And I'll tell you some ways that you can really address the problem uh, truly. But for now, if you have an, an estrogen issue, which she may, pregnenolone, 100 milligrams a day, or progesterone cream. Also, vitamin A and vitamin E, <coughs> excuse me, can help balance out estrogen. And using more fiber can also help the body clear out estrogen. Digestive enzymes can be helpful, especially if they have bile in them. Bile is a major route of elimination for excess estrogen. And of course, if she has any kind of a digestive health issue, eliminating problem foods is also going to be important. And then uh, probiotics, which help the body process fats as well as estrogen and keep the intestine healthy are also a must in addition to fermented foods. I would be using the nightly essence and I would also be using uh, or eating sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, any kinds of fermented, fermented foods that you can think of, you can make your own. And then essential fatty acids, EFAs, are the quintessential molecules, nutritional molecules of inflammation. Any kind of inflammatory health issue should be... a a reason to make sure you're dosing yourself with your ultimate EFAs, 9 to 15 of them a day. So you're going to look at eliminating problem foods, working on the digestive system, and especially around fat metabolism, and then balancing out estrogen. Is that helpful, uh, Spencer? Yes, it is. Okay, buddy. Have a good day. And I don't mean to, I don't mean to uh, uh, marginalize the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Get it on the Healthy Star Pack because you've got to have all the basics. But everything I told you is more specific for headaches. All right, okay. thanks for your call, buddy. Have a good day right. in, uh, in Canada. Appreciate it. And let's go to Graziano in California. Good morning, Graziano. Hey, good morning. How's it going, Ben? It's going good. What's up? Hey, I have a quick question. Um, so I have a friend who, like, maybe she's, like, in red 40s, and she's got a high uric acid, which is gout. Um, and so her doctor wants to put her on dialysis. So wait, 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 hang on. Her, she, that's all she has is gout, and she, he wants to put on dialysis? Yeah, so she's got no. uh, high uric acid. So he's saying the kidneys aren't working, so he needs to put her on. There must be there must be more to that story. That's nope. the only thing I was told. Okay, well, there must be more to the story because there's, there's got to be some kind of kidney problems. Let's, we're going to talk about gout and uric acid okay. when we come back. Uh, but it's true that uric acid, there is a relationship between uric acid and the kidneys. The number one reason why uric acid goes up is because cells are dying and spewing out their uric acid. But, but hang on, we'll uh, finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, eight four four two three six sixty ten. I'm going to go a little bit fast here. What happened to? Uh, there's Graziano. Hey Graziano, I don't mean to rush you, but I got a bunch of calls I want to get to. So for uh, uric acid, the first thing you want to think about is uh, inflammation and dead cells. What is underlying? What is causing the underlying problem? There will always be other health issues associated with uric acid. Nobody, nobody, nobody just has elevated uric acid. Now the fact that he wants to put her on dialysis leads me to believe there's some kind of kidney dysfunction, which is not unusual because, as I say, the two reasons why uric acid levels go up are number one, dying cells, and number two, sugar, specifically, especially fructose. So you want to uh, look for underlying health issues and then address those. That'll take care of the, the dying cells spewing out their uric acid. And if you want a, a first place to start, obviously it's going to be the blood sugar system because of the relationship between uric acid and sugar. U uric acid elevation and gout have traditionally been known as the disease of kings. Have you ever heard that term, the disease of kings, Graziano? Graziano? We don't, do we have Graziano? I don't know where Graziano went. Graziano, you there? Go here. I'm okay. here. Have you heard the term the disease of kings? I haven't. I thought uh, AIDS was the disease of kings. No, that's the disease. Yeah. Well, never mind that. But the disease it's of kings. Okay, I've never heard of it. <laughs> okay, the disease of kings. They used to call gout the disease of kings because people who ate lots of sugar and fatty foods get it. So uh -huh. in any case, you want to. Uh, it's also associated with diabetes, as is kidney problems. So low blood, uh, re blood sugar reducing diet. Use the sweeties from Longevity, the ultimate niacin from Longevity, the ultimate selenium from Longevity, the Fucoid Z, more fiber with meals, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine throughout the day, and make sure anytime she wants to. 
to something sweet or bread or pasta or rice or potatoes, which we all crave and love if we're human, uh, is try to gear her or s switch over into more protein, particularly bone broth protein, which you can find at brightsidehealth.com, and also more fats. The ketogenic diet will help her as well. Dialysis is miserable. Have her do a little bit of research uh, or talk to folks who are dealing with dialysis. Anything you could do to avoid it is uh, you want to do. And then uh, if she's not, the kidneys are functional at 20%. So I don't know how bad her kidneys can be for di dialysis. Uh, I don't know. That sounds like something you're missing a a point there or a key part of the picture yeah. there. Uh, but in any case, blood sugar issues, that's the first thing to do. And then look also for digestive toxicity, why cells are exploding and spewing their uric acid contents into the okay. blood. Well, I'll, okay. I'll ask her a little bit more and I'll give you a call back another day. And then does NAC help too? Of course, NAC helps everything, always. Okay. It's, a, it's not an essential nutrient, but it is yeah. an amazing detoxifying substance. It also has chelating properties that might help the uric acid. All right, my friend. Right, Good to talk Thank to you, you Graziano. Take care. Okay, take care. All right, let's go to David in Pennsylvania. Good morning, David. Hi, Ben. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? I wanted to see what uh, I could do for like an upper respiratory infection or a uh, sinus infection. Are you sure it's an infection, like a bacterial infection? Uh, I have a lot of um, like dark brown phlegm coming up. Uh, usually, I'm, cough I'm coughing nonstop. And that's always coming okay, up out of me. We don't know if it's an infection. <clears throat> if it okay. is an infection, if the, technically an infection means there's bacteria that are growing where they shouldn't be growing. And that's an antibiotic issue. Okay? If you have a bacterial infection, that's when you use an antibiotic to kill those bacteria. But you've got to have a severe one because the body can resolve things if you're healthy. But if it's severe, you definitely, that's, you know, there's times you want an antibiotic. I know I rip on drugs all the time, and the overuse of antibiotics <coughs> excuse me, is certainly a problem. But if you have a severe infection, that's one approach that you want to take. However, if you don't know if it's an infection, it could be a bodily response. Mucus secretion in the respiratory tract is one of the ways the immune system shows shows up and that means something is getting into the blood that shouldn't be into the blood so if you what you'll the way you can assess this is if your conditions flare or spike they get worse you know what i'm saying if they're steady if they're always steady no matter what you're doing you very likely could have some kind of bacteria in there uh and it and t typically it will get progressively worse if you have a bacterial infection but if it flares look to something you're doing especially food now, do you have any mucus secretion in your nose, or in, are you tearing out of the eyes, or are you puffy at all? Anywhere? Um, now, just a little bit out of the nose, but mainly coughing up and from my okay. throat. Or does it get worse? Does it flare up, or is it always pretty steady? Well, this has just been over the past couple of days, but um, it's it's pretty much been nonstop the past okay. three days. Th then I'd be looking at an infection. And if it was me, I would be getting an antibiotic. Make sure that okay. you're using probiotics with, or not with, but uh, when you're done with your antibiotics and maybe a few hours after you take your antibiotic, you're eating fermented food and using probiotics. You always want probiotics with your antibiotics, but you don't want to take them together because the antibiotics will kill the probiotics. So you got to leave some space a few hours between the dosing, maybe, maybe four or five hours between your dosing. Uh, if you don't have the time to, the space between dosing with your antibiotic and taking your probiotic, wait until you're done with your course of therapy because the antibiotic will kill the probiotic. But nonetheless, support intestinal health. After you take a round of antibiotics, it could be months before your gut bacteria are restored. So it's critical to focus on digestive health after a round of antibiotics. Thank right. you, Ben. Good to talk to you, David. Take care, man. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to uh, Max in Austin, Texas. Good morning, Max. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. How are you? Oh, my friend Max from. Uh, yes. I met Austin, you a couple weeks ago. I met yes. you at the meeting. Yes. Yes. What's going on, yeah, Max? I, today I called for my uh, gum. Uh, I have a gum infection. Uh, my, okay. You know. My, you have gum disease. Like, is is yeah, it gum disease? It's swallowing and yeah, it's uh, uh, above my teeth on my gums. Okay. Uh, the gums are receding, like, Max. Hang on a second. The gums are receding. Uh. It's kind of swallowing. Okay, that's the connective tissue. The gums are made up of connective tissue. That's arthritis of the gums or just connective tissue deterioration that's occurring in the gums. But it could happen anywhere, probably is happening anywhere. So everything we talk about for building connective tissue, uh, first of all, removing or eliminating sugar and any toxins, that's very important because sugar and toxicity from the digestive tract will inevitably 
get dumped into the connective tissue, and that will cause problems with connective tissue regeneration. So eliminating toxicity, including sugar, is important. Then using all of your connective tissue building strategies, bone broth, bone broth protein, the Fucoid Z, gelatin, which we're going to be talking about here in a few days. Gelatin is phenomenal for helping build the connective tissue, as women have known for eons, for millennia, how important uh, uh, gelatin is for building connective tissue, whether it's in the face or the, the bones or, or the gums. Also, using nutrients that energize growth. We don't talk a lot about coenzyme Q10. That's a major, major energizing nutrient, and connective tissue tissue cells need energy, like all cells, so using coenzyme Q10 can be helpful, as well as vitamin C. I'd be using high doses of vitamin C, which is the rate-limiting nutrient. Without vitamin C, you cannot make connective tissue, and many of us are vitamin C, not, not blatantly deficient, but we're certainly not getting enough vitamin C. So using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and I would be throwing some extra vitamin C as well. Uh, in addition to the bone broth protein, you might want to take just make sure you're getting enough protein, uh, particularly chicken protein protein and meat protein if you're eating animal foods. Uh, animal foods, uh, meat protein contains a type of amino acid that's very important for building connective tissue. You can also, of course, use our bone broth protein to do that. And then slimy substances like the Fucoid Z and also aloe vera and noni can also help. Think building connective tissue. And I think you were telling me you also had cancer. Was that you, Max, that was talking about cancer earlier? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. It's the same idea. C connective tissue... Cancer yeah. follows connective tissue deterioration. So all of this is telling me that you've got this breakdown in the connective tissue that you want to start to address. Max, I, gonna, I have diabetes too. That's, so that's all part of the same, same picture. You know, yeah. work on the triangle of disease. Digestive system, make sure you're using nutrients to build connective tissue, focus on eliminating or at least reducing blood sugar, and then calming the body down. Don't forget activating the healing system through parasympathetic nervous system, relaxation techniques, deep breathing, hot water, massage, Reiki. I know I, I, I say a lot. And that one of the reasons these parasympathetic techniques, these relaxation techniques work so well is because they help support the building of the connective tissue. The connective tissue is responsive to the thoughts we think, to the feelings we feel, not to mention, of course, the foods we eat and the nutrition we get or, or we don't get. Max, I'm going to let you go, brother. Good to talk to you. Have a beautiful day. Hope we helped. And let me, uh, gosh, we're just out of time here. Let's go real quick to Gary in Minneapolis. Gary, what's going on, bro? Uh, I'm looking for a game plan to get rid of these Lumina drops I'm taking every night. I put one drop in my left eye. The eye yeah. is 20-20 vision, thick cornea, totally healthy eye. But I had very high eye pressure, and the Lumina drops worked. Are you talking about Lumigen? They Lumagen? got me down into what, a, what they are call you talking about safe range. I think you're talking about Lumigen, right? Or Lumigen. Yeah, yeah, I got it right okay. here. Yeah, and Lumigen. It, it, uh, I have no effects from the drops, and my vision last check was still 20-20, but... I hey, Gary, I'm, gonna, I'm running out of time. Let me just tell you about glaucoma really quickly. Glaucoma is caused by the same thing that causes all health issues. Inflammation, starvation, suffocation, and toxification that affects the cells of the safety valve in the eye. The eye has a safety valve that drains out fluid. When that safety valve becomes inflamed, you end up with glaucoma. Treat it the same way you treat everything else. Use digestive support, blood sugar, uh, uh, blood sugar support, and the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. I'm just out of time, bro. I hope you call back tomorrow, and I'll help you more, more with glaucoma. I'm pharmacist Ben, have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.